Pallavi, you are from Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. Yes, sir. You have done uh, BA LLB yes, and your optional is also law. Yes, sir. And uh, you have been the house captain. Yes, sir. In Kamil School. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, singing vocal Hindustani classical music yes, is one sir. of your hobbies. And also you read uh, thrillers. So, uh, when we talk about law, tell me, uh, what do you understand by recusal and conflict of interest? Uh, right, sir. I think they are interrelated concepts. Mm -hmm. I would first mm -hmm. like to answer what a conflict of interest is. In the terms of law, wherever any party, be it in quasi-judicial sphere or in the judicial sphere, who has the ability to determine the rights and liabilities of the party or determine the obligation of any dispute that has come before them, have any sort of interest in the outcome or have any prior relationship to the parties themselves. Hmm. That I would define as conflict of interest, sir. Hmm. And recusal is the voluntarily uh, backing out of such judicial authority because of any existing conflict of interest. Okay. What are the constitutional provisions uh, for state bifurcation? Which articles of the constitution talks about state's bifurcation or, or maybe reorganization of the states? Sir, I think Article 3. Yeah. Of the Constitution talks about it. Correct. 2, 3 and 4. All right. Uh, which article talks about uh, animal rights in the Constitution? Sir, so, uh, animal rights are protected under the directive principles of state policy, mm -hmm. wherein uh, I can't name the numbers, okay, sir, no I can't problem. recall it. Where do you think prohibition word occurs in the Constitution? At which places? So, prohibition. prohibition. It occurs at a number of places. Can you, and all in different contexts. Can you name some of them? So, one context that comes to mind is prohibition of consumption of alcohol mm -hmm. in the DPSPs. Correct. Uh, Another very important, very sir, important remedy is there. Uh, so, perhaps you can hint, give me a hint. <laughs> yeah, I, the, I, the, writs, the writ. Uh, so, uh, right, one of the five writs is correct, prohibition correct. under Article 32. Yeah, and 226. there is one more place where prohibition. Is, is also so, there. But anyway, okay, um, all right. Now, house captain. So, tell me what are the requirements or attributes of a captain or leader? Because you would be leading a team of officers working under you. Even if you are a collector or in a director or a secretary, what are the essential requirements of a leader? Sir, I think one of the most important requirements of a leader is honesty. They have to be honest with respect to their own capabilities. They have to be honest with respect to assessing the capabilities of the people who work under them, which makes them accountable, which makes them uh, a better leader in terms of resource allocation, allocation of duties and delegation of tasks. In addition to that, sir, I think having the ability to listen to your subordinates, so people who are working under you is also very important, which I would say is uh, your receptivity to feedback because that allows you to create coordination and cohesion in the unit that you're working with. What about other things like integrity? Sir, integrity is also essential mm -hmm. because it isn't merely accountability to a third party, but it is accountability to yourself with respect to mm -hmm. the aims and goals that you've set for yourself and your team. And it allows for a sort of uh, uh, recollection of your tasks and uh, gives what you... What about uh, efficiency and effectiveness? Sir, efficiency One and... can be very, very honest yes. and not perform anything. Right, it sir. does not produce a result. No, sir, so I agree. And... Efficiency yeah. and effectiveness are okay. equally important. All right. Now, do you think a student's union uh, necessary in the case of a college or a university? Don't you think that student's union, uh, because student's union are the first step towards politics, hmm. and the students come to the college and university to study, do you think the union should be allowed to be formed in the colleges? Sir, I do think unions should be allowed to okay. be formed in the colleges because mm. one of the most essential mm. things that a union is able to achieve is to effectively communicate with the administration mm. in order to uh, coherently mm. place the requirements of the student body in front of the administration. Sir, I think they form a very important link mm. between the people who have the ability to make a change in the student environment and the requirements of the students themselves. 
So I think unions are essential. However, they must function within the parameters of the student, uh, the university itself. It is important to recognize that the main purpose of an educational institute is to impart education. And any activity that can uh, inhibit that must be uh, discouraged, sir. Okay. Uh, talking about the Hindustani classical music, yes, some sir. of the ragas have been uh, sort of... Uh, we have derived them from southern part of the country yes, into sir. the northern part. Can you name one or two such ragas which have come from the southern India? Sir, Rag Bhairvi is a, an, is a rag that we that is inspired from Carnatic music as well. That is derived from the Thart, Bhairav Thart itself, which also has uh, similarities with Carnatic music. Uh, sir... Uh, Apart from that, I can't recall. Charu Keshi? Sir, Charu Keshi is another also such another? rag. Okay. Right, sir. What is the time at which Bhairav Rag is generally you know, sung or practiced? Sir, I think it's sung in a time called the Purvang, hmm. which is uh, early morning or hmm. late at night. It's a, it's a division of time between 4 a.m. Hmm. and uh, to early morning. Sir. Which rag do you find to be most melodious amongst the Hindustani hmm. rags? Sir, my favorite is Rag Mia Malhar. Mia Malhar. That okay. is derived from Kafi Thak, sir. Okay. Any particular Bollywood song which is based on the Mia Ki Malhar? Sir, Bolare Papiha. Okay. It's based on uh, Mia Malhar Thak. One of the Ghazal singers was very fond of Mia Ki Malhar. Uh, sir. Uh, in Pakistan. In his Ghazals, you could hear. Sir, I can't recall him. So Mehdi Hassan. Mehdi Hassan, right, sir. He's, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Pallavi, yes, India has assumed the presidency of one of the international bodies. Yes, ma'am. Which one? G20. What is the mandate of G20? Ma'am, G20 has been uh, organized as one of the premier economic institutions in the entire world. For what the, purpose? Ma'am, for, for ensuring global financial stability. It was created after the Asian financial crisis of 1997 with the mandate of ensuring that the global financial systems are strengthened and are uh, regulated, ma'am. How many members? Ma'am, G20 has 19 countries and European Union. Okay. And uh, uh, how much of uh, world uh, gross product does it represent? I'm around 85%, if I'm 80, not correct. 80%. 75% international trade and 80% world. Okay. Now, uh, G20 has, there has been a demand for removal of Russia. Yes, ma'am. What do you say on that? Ma'am, I think... Uh, while the intention behind such a demand might be uh, noble because we want to create moral pressure on Russia to back out of Ukraine. But I think in the long and this term... this is not just Ukraine war, it is before that also. Ma yes, ma'am. The, their annexation of Crimea and basically their uh, aggressive actions towards their neighbours. But I think in the long term, since Russia represents a large part of the country, it represents a large part of crude oil, of important essential commodities as well and is, has been a member of most international uh, global financial setups. I think it would, uh, it would hinder the global stability in the long run. Now. Okay. What is your opinion on a beauty pageant? Is it just, should it be banned because it is just display of uh, women's, uh, you know, physical uh, parts? Or does it, does it have a purposeful meaning? Ma'am, I think we need to view it in two segments. First is the thing that you've rightly pointed out, that it leads to objectification of women and their body parts and has a long-term domino effect on the way that young women feel about themselves. But the second really important aspect that is connected to this is uh, international recognition of countries on a global scale and uh, uh, ma'am, scholarship funds and monetary uh, allocations that are attached to these beauty pageants. So and I also think beauty with a purpose. Yes, ma'am. Beauty with a purpose. purpose. Many of our uh, Can you name some of the Indians who've made the mark? There are three kinds of pageants at the global level. Do you know which are the three? Ma'am, Miss Universe, Miss World, and I think Mrs. World. There is for... Uh, Miss Earth. Miss Earth. Right, ma'am. So any of the Indians who made to any of these three? Ma'am, Sushmita Singh. Yeah. Priyanka Chopra. Yeah. Uh, Manushi Chiller. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, these are the... Ishwarya Rai, perhaps. Yeah. Ishwarya Rai. Yeah. Ma'am, these are the few that come to mind. All right. The first one was? 
Ma'am, Sushmita Sen, I think. No, no. much, much, <laughs> much before. before that. Ma'am, yeah. I'm not aware. I'm so sorry. 1966, Rita Faria. Rita Faria, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you've been a debater. You have participated in moot courts and you've got some awards. So, a few questions on that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are a large number of fake lawyers these days crowding the courts. Fake lawyers? Yes. There yes, was a survey done just before the lockdown and 60 to 70 percent were found to be fake. Why mm. is this still no action and what would you do if you were the law minister? Ma'am, I think firstly I would like to answer why and why there is no action. There is a process of registration with the Bar Council of India as well as with the state uh, bar council in order to be qualified as a lawyer and for that you need certain qualification okay. degrees ma'am because this process despite is very all lax that, despite all that why is it happening ma'am so firstly rampant. the pra process is lax and second uh, while filing the vakalat nama in the courts there is no process there is no uh, certification that you have to necessarily provide of your registration with the bci so which is why it's so do? easy what would you do Ma'am, I would institute this process of certification of your registration with the Bar Council of India and that it is continuing and hasn't expired. And secondly, a, whenever you are supposed to uh, uh, submit the Vakalat Nama in front of the courts, I would say that you give a copy of your registration as well. Ma'am, this okay. would ensure that now, it's not... Uh, you know, at the time of independence, women in India were given a full voting right, yes, which is one of the rare rights which India had. Even in the US, they didn't have the full, complete voting right to begin with. Yes, ma'am. But do you think this has led to equal status and equal opportunities for women? Ma'am, I think not necessarily. Because while we have the right in paper, it is paper equality. It hasn't translated into equitability. And it hasn't translated into a substantive right. Firstly, because women... Uh, intergenerationally have been disenfranchised when it comes to political power. Secondly, we have minimum representation of women in the parliament, which is in the Lok Sabha, merely 14%. Thirdly, ma'am, I would say that because of the patriarchal setup of the society and of their families as well, very little independent political thought goes behind them exercising uh, the voting rights to a certain extent. Okay. Which is why, ma'am, I would say okay. that it hasn't Now, you've been an editor-in-chief, I think, of a, a legal journal. Yes, ma'am. But I'll ask you a generic question. All right, ma'am. Uh, what can be the role of opinion leaders, and I'm equating editors to opinion leaders, in policy formulation? Ma'am, it can be very instrumental because the resources that many editorials, many leaders employ are based on empirical research and data collection, which can... Uh, substitute and supplement the governmental data collection in the first place. Secondly, that policy formulation is uh, based on a lot of background research that is done through the academic opinions by... I'm asking, how can opinion leaders influence policy formulation in simple terms? Ma'am, uh, by generating and by uh, gathering public opinion, by responding and by uh, participating in public consultations for many of the policies that the government opens up for public consultation. And ma'am, thirdly, by creating uh, a diversity of opinions when it comes to feedback. policy and it impacts. Feedback, feedback is the simplest way. Okay, right. thank you. Pallavi, I was uh, wanting to ask you questions on law. Yes, but sir. since you have done Sangeet Prabhakar in vocal, I am tempted to ask you a few questions on music. <laughs> sir, I'll try to answer them to Very the best well. of my ability. So it is said that Ucharan Bhed se Raag Bhed ho jata hai. Yes, sir. Uh, can you give me an example of that? Sir, Ucharan Bhed se Raag Bhed ho jata hai. Uh, Hint? Yes, sir. Todi? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, Lagao, a particular swarga. Sir, I'm sorry, I'm not able to. Gandhar? Sir, Gandhar, right. Gandhar, and uh, you can differentiate between the different styles of singing as well. So, for example, a similar song or a similar composition, Bandish, that mm -hmm. is called, can be sung in the khayal format, which would then be related to the khayal rags, which would include Bhopali, Yaman, etc. 
or could be sung in an elongated manner with greater uh, breath control and would be a form of uh, dhrupad singing with vilambit tal okay to so, bhairavi aur uh, todi dono mein gandhar lagta hai lekin gandhar ko lagane ka prak- jo tarika hai wo alag wo alag hota hai hai na right sir okay todi and multani both are uh, rag multani belongs to the third todi yes sir what is the difference sir, between sir i haven't learned multani rag okay because it's not one of the most popular rags in the gharana from which i have learned music okay, which is your gharana sir gwalior gharana okay which is why my knowledge with respect to a lot of the other rags might be limited it's a aapke gharane ke kaun se pramukh rag hain sir uh, mia malhar yaman bhopali uh, rags that are based on kafi thaat khamaj thaat those are the rags that rag patdi belongs to which thaat sorry sir rag patdi patdi भैरवी राग sir uh, rag bhairavi as far as i remember has uh, it doesn't have the na swar in it in the sat sargam uh, in the aro and avro it doesn't have a na it has a komal ga and uh, which is which is again sung in two ways and it has a komal dha as well sir so it uses all 12 tones sir it uses all differently tones. differently yes sir isn't it yes sir okay uh why western music the notations are called octave sir and oct- yahan it is called sargam saptak saptak yes why? sir what is the reason sir we in the indian classical music we consider the sat surs that are in the most natural progression okay. to be the basic set of uh, all music okay. we have derived it from uh, ancient texts including the natya shastra Have you heard of antar gandhar? Antar gandhar. Sir, have you heard this term? Sir, I have heard this term, but I don't think I'll be able to answer okay. the question. <laughs> Thank you. Your problem with music is over because I have no idea of music, <laughs> okay, right? Sir. You know, the present foreign minister <clears throat> is a former diplomat. Yes, sir. And we are in very difficult times at the moment, foreign affairs wise, and he comes across as a very competent man. and it's quite clear that's because of his past 40 years in diplomacy yes sir you think the government should extend this philosophy of having professional ministers in ministry of defense there is general vk singh who's there in the ministry similarly in finance ministry and things like that will it be a good idea sir i think to an extent of course yes because it recognizes a great amount of experience that they have on ground which perhaps might be missing when partisan appointments are made on the basis of political lines but uh, there also must be recognition of the fact that bureaucrats in essence are neutral parties the most essential aspect of a bureaucrat in a political set setup like democracy is is their neutrality and impartiality when it comes to the ministers and political lines so i think that actually might also be a beneficial aspect because they have a Uh, professional outlook towards things so is there i think it affect uh, the loyalty of the people in bureaucracy in civil services if know that this is an opportunity lying ahead yes sir i do think that it might create a, a domino effect upon the lower levels of the bureaucracy and civil servants who might expect certain returns all right why is middle east called middle east it is middle of what and east of what sir middle east of uh, so it's in the middle of europe and asia and it's it's to the east of western nations us uk which have uh, basically have had the uh, uh, frankly i i also don't i'm not sure because nobody has been able to convince me why it's called middle east but as a indian foreign service aspirant uh, you may look at this yes, you know some minister made a declaration in the parliament declaring the intention to take back pok yes sir you think it was a wise statement to make sir i think there are two aspects to look at it 
First is the political declaration, which reinforces our uh, statement that we consider it an integral part of India. On that account, I think it's, the statement was fine. However, when we talk about military and strategic position of POK today, and the position of our military, and our capability of the military, I think it might be a little too early to claim that we can get POK back. Right. So much awaited UN, uh, you know, 40, 30, we are 30 years from today, fast forward. You are Indian ambassador in the United Nations. Yes, sir. And the UN restructuring is now taking place. They have to select one country from Asia, which will be a permanent member of the, in the United Nations. And the toss is between India and China. So Chinese representative has made his case. You got to make your case for India as more deserving nation to be a mem permanent member of the UN uh, United Nations as against uh, China. China. So this is the house. You are on the podium. You got 30 seconds. So the first thing that I would point out is that 30 years in the future, we will have the largest population on Earth. So we will be the greatest representative of humanity on this planet. So the second thing that I would say is we would have the largest uh, young demography, which would need to be employed and which would be the most productive in the world. So that is also another aspect that would hold us as representative of people in the United Nations Security Council. The, thirdly thing, the third thing that I would say is the integrity with which India has participated in the international arena, whether it be in terms of nuclear weapons, whether it be in terms of engagement with its neighbors, or be in terms of its humanitarian aid that it has never shied away from providing to any country that has needed its help. So I would say that India has displayed this integrity in the international arena that makes it a good contender. And lastly, sir, I would say is that India's non-alignment and neutrality that would make it an impartial party in the United Nations Security Council, especially as opposed to China that has uh, in the past and today even presently displays its own agenda on these international scales. So I think these are the few points that All I would right. place. Good. Thank you. Okay, Pallavi, so uh, we will take you back outside in the waiting room for a few moments. We'll call okay. you back for the feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs>
But just to supplement what, uh, because naturally we cannot ask all the questions and uh, you will be asked questions definitely regarding Madhya Pradesh, yes. regarding Bhopal. So read through the Gazetteer of Bhopal, which okay, are the sir. important institutions, why it is important in terms of areas, which I would just quickly good glance through it. Yes, sir. The history of Madhya Pradesh, the social problems of Madhya Pradesh, industries, culture, tourism, eating habits, uh, the main crops, the water potential, the power, everything about that. Okay, okay. Sir. And then about your own uh, district, that is Bhopal. That yes, is sir. one. The second is that uh, since uh, you have done your uh, uh, classical music is, is, your, uh, is your main mainstay. So naturally, that is your hobby. So a lot many questions will be asked you. Some of them questions we did ask you. But uh, there may be, you may invite many questions on that. Reading thriller, pick up one thriller which you have read. Okay, sir. Okay, one thriller. So that if they ask you, which is the thriller you have read, you may name that thriller. And okay, they can sir. ask you questions on that. House captain, I asked you many questions. So the foundational values which are required for a civil servant. What does ethics and values mean for a civil servant? Mm -hmm. That you should know. And then uh, coming to the law. So read the constitution once again. I'm sure you must have read it so many times. Yes, sir. And the different statutes and enactments pertaining to the women, pertaining to children, pertaining to the senior citizens, uh, everything you should go through that. Okay. So Domestic Violence Act and uh, you know, Equal Remuneration Act uh, and yes, uh, Eve Teasing Act and uh, Dowry Prohibition Act and POSH, everything. All right, sir. All right. Then uh, regarding children, POXO Act and uh, Juvenile Justice Juvenile Act, Justice. and similarly for senior citizens also. Yes, sir. India and its neighbors, read the, the policy of India, foreign policy, vis-a-vis -vis the neighbors. Yes, sir. And uh, the, then the policy of India vis-a-vis -vis the other uh, important countries. The, the place of India as a permanent member of Security Council, that of course is something which going, uh, keeps on uh, raising head. And yes, then sir. the role of the United Nations is vis-a-vis, -vis, for example, respect to uh, Ukraine and Russia war. Yes, sir. Uh, it, we have found that it has not been able to uh, have any influence in stopping that war. Yes, so sir. why the effect is going down? You must uh, go through that. The, the reforms in the Bretton Woods institutions and other institutions, yes, sir. role of WHO, COVID-19, the global issues which are being faced by the world, that is uh, the poverty and hunger and yes, migration and drugs and COVID-19 and climate change, yes, terrorism, all these things you yes, should. Then the Millennium Development Goals and the Sustainable Development Goals. Yes, also read through the budget. Your yes, interview is going to be post-March. March. Yes, so sir. budget would be there and economic yes, survey of sir. India. Go yes, through sir. that also. Yes, and the privatization of the PSUs, that is the policy which the government is pursuing nowadays. Divestment, disinvestment, yes, now privatization. So uh, read through the asset monetization pipeline, which yes, the finance minister announced. Hmm. Go through the uh, Niti Ayo website and try to find out what exactly is there. And then in constitution, everything regarding president and vice president, impeachment of judges and how the judges are appointed. What are the lacunas in that? The the um, the, the enactment which was brought about by the government of India, it was struck down NGC. by yeah. Yes. So so then what is there? Is it in a limbo? What exactly needs to be done? The collegium system, is it the best one? Or yes, it sir. needs to be replaced by another system? All these things, uh, uh, questions may be asked to you. And then e-governance and, and, and the good governance principle. And there are many other things relating to reservation of women, for example, mm -hmm. issues relating to that. What will you do in case you come across a situation uh, in which the women of a society in, in your district are facing certain problems? How will you ensure justice is given to them? How will you ensure the enrollment of uh, the girls in your in your school and mm -hmm. so on? These things issued women empowerment, gender sensitization, and posh. Okay, they will sir. be definitely there. And uh, then uh, things concerning the revenue administration. Understand that. Go to a collector's okay, office. Go to a block development office. Go to a village okay, to see how things happen. And that because even if though Indian Foreign Service is one of uh, it's number two preference, isn't it? Hmm. So number one is still Indian Administrative, administrative service. service. So you need to know about the Zilla Parishad, 73rd, 74th Amendment, how things actually happen. Yes, what sir. are the funds, function, functionaries? Hmm. You know, three that is the concept. Three right. things which are important. Important thing like CARA, like PESA, hmm. and the soft power, welfare state, which are the official actors, which are the unofficial actors in the policy making process. Hmm. That you should go through. Okay. okay and why... Indian, uh, why civil service? That is the question which we 
you must prepare that well okay, okay. Sir. so that's about it if you have any questions you can ask us uh sir i actually wanted feedback on the areas that i was getting stuck in uh i wanted your advice my again hindustani classical music is the area that i kept getting stuck on it's such a wide area and perhaps i won't be able to answer most of the questions Actually, that might be put to me how do i see, go about to get straight away announced you are from gwalior gharana and this is what actually okay ma'am you see so that Gwalia might limit Gharana, the scope yeah. of questions and you are very good i mean you're really good since you have uh, taken this formal degree yes sir uh, I, i mean i am a musician myself and i have some grounding in music <laughs> and uh, have studied out of passion but these questions uh, these are not easy questions i can assure you okay sir uchcharan bhed rag bhed and uh, characteristics of you know uh, various these things. are technical things okay sir but uh, if uh, if you have uh, there is a wonderful book by pandit ram ashray jha okay sir uh, swargi danjali Yes, sir. So, I mean, Tanj- so these are the books that we are referred to uh, in the course. Achha. These are the books that we have read in the course. So I think I should go and revise that. Sure. Sure. So, so be brush up whatever you and have. And yet he was the head Don't of the department. Don't expand too much. Just be thorough with what you have already done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this. You know, don't get confused at this yeah, stage that you have you to can, do this. You have to do that. Whatever you can recall. Yes, See sir. whatever you have brush studied. Only that you can. You see, we don't have to bluff. Yeah, whatever yeah. you know yeah yeah absolutely okay. fine whatever you're not expected you're, to know everything so your grammar is fine okay. and if they ask any questions it may be uh, you may may not be knowing that so you can always explain. some eminent uh, singers of your gharana you know yes, sir. rags of your gharana rags singers These are the common ones okay sir but your answers in respect they were quite good they were very good yeah. music was okay. you were quite you came out quite well what is the learning from music which you can carry from there or how is it how is that helped you to develop as a person you know mm-hmm. what you are those kind of generic questions you can also okay, think ma'am. about yes ma'am so otherwise and this, just brush up whatever you have these rags are according to prayer yes ma'am yes samay rag ki jo hai na chale time theory of music to pratham prayer dutiya prayer tritiya utrang purvang us hisab se dekh so okay, whatever you have just brush that up okay, okay? any more questions <laughs> i think uh, I'm actually quite happy with the feedback. We are also happy. <laughs> so we we'll wish you all well. the best. You will do Thank very you, well. Sir. Just don't be complacent and go on, uh, you know, moving in the direction in which we have indicated to you. Okay. And sir. I can assure you that you will be performing exceedingly well in Thank terms you, of your interview. Okay. We we'll like to see you as the future civil servant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sir. What's your first you. choice? I'm administrative oh, yes, service. Sir. Not uh, foreign service. Um, it's my second preference. Second. No, no. Here in paper, I'm not asking on paper. My my first preference is administrative services. Still, it is your heart is there. And I want to work at the ground level. Okay. Which okay. is something that only administrative services okay. can provide. Okay. So the the diplomats system. walk in the air, right? Sorry, sir. The diplomats walk in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. The best. Thank you. Thank you. An academy. Let's crack it.